one of, if not the most famous French tank of the Second World War was the B-1 heavy tank and its improved model, the B-1 bis. These large infantry tanks were some of the most heavily armed and armored tanks that existed in the world during the late 1930s. While their production only started in the second half of this decade, they had roots going back as far as 1921, with the Shah de Bataille program that started a search for a medium, well-armed tank to fill in the void between the small and numerous Renault FT and the gigantic and rare FCM2C. Within the proposals offered to this program was one designed by the tank and artillery manufacturer Schneider, in collaboration with the motorized vehicle giant Renault. The Schneider Renault B, or SRB. Welcome to a new Tank Encyclopedia voiced article. If you like our content, please do consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. Every dollar gain there go towards the amazing illustrations that accompany each and every one of our articles and videos. Thanks to all that already help us, and if you want more such content from us, please do consider donating. Arguably the most important figure of the first years of French tank development was General Jean Estienne. Nicknamed the father of tanks in France, Estienne, a major proponent of the use of armored vehicles from 1915 onward, was named the director of the Special Artillery, the French Armored Force in September of 1916. It is largely thanks to his intervention to the Grand Quartier General, France's general headquarters, that the FT light tank reached mass production. Estienne was also a proponent of the Schneider CA-1, the first French tank to see service. At the end of the war, Estienne continued his role as the leading figure of French armored development. He was still at the head of the Special Artillery, which was attached to the French infantry and renamed the Combat Tank Subdivision, and he was also named Combat Tank Inspector. In this position, Estienne had large amounts of power over the future development of French armored technology. With the French military having large quantities of largely effective light tanks, thanks to the mass production of the Renault FT, and with the development of a large tank already underway at FCM since 1916, with the FCM-1 and then FCM-2C super heavy tanks, what the French military lacked in his view was an intermediate vehicle between the dwarves and the giants. A battle tank, a char de bataille, was desired, thought of as a vehicle of medium weight that would feature a fixed 75mm gun able to engage enemy fortifications and positions, and to move through the devastated terrain typical of trench warfare in an artillery saturated battlefield. Estienne thought the type would offer the ideal compromise, mounting an armament capable of knocking out enemy fortifications and trenches, something the FT's armament of either a machine gun or a 37mm gun struggled with, while being vastly more reasonable and easier to mass produce than a monster the size and weight of the 69 ton, 10 meter long 2C. If successful, the Shah de Bataille would have eventually become the workhorse of France's armored force. In 1921, Estienne gathered five of the largest French industrial companies, Schneider, Renault, Saint-Chamond, FCM, and Delaunay-Belleville, and gave them the requirements of the Shah de Bataille which he requested them to design. The vehicle was to have a weight of 13 tons and feature a hull-mounted main gun, either a 75mm howitzer with a muzzle velocity of 350 meters per second or the higher velocity 47mm model 1902 naval gun with 750 meter per second muzzle velocity. The tank was to have a turret armed with either one or two machine guns. It was to have a power to weight ratio of at least 8 horsepower per ton and be able to run for 8 to 10 hours. The armor was to be 25mm thick. Most importantly, the program was not planned to result in the immediate adoption of the product that answered to the specifications the most. The plan was that once the prototypes were produced, the most interesting features from each would be taken to then be featured in a new tank design that would not be the property of a company, but of the state. The objective of such a move was to reduce competition and encourage the manufacturers to innovate without the risk of a yet not entirely mastered concept leading to the refusal of a proposal. Once the vehicle that combined the best features of each proposal was adopted, each of the manufacturers involved would play a part in the production. This original policy was named the STN Agreements.
While Saint Chamond and FCM went to design and build their own prototypes in complete independence from other firms, Schneider and Renault decided to collaborate to produce two different prototypes. This collaboration mostly consisted of some major elements of the prototypes being shared by both, notably the turret designed by Schneider and the power plant designed by Renault. The design of the vehicle and their manufacturing outside of those two major elements though remained independent. The second prototype, the SRB, was designed and manufactured by Schneider in its facilities at Le Creusot in Burgundy, while SRA was produced by Renault in Bianco in the western suburbs of Paris. Still, the holes of the vehicles in their design appear to be almost identical, though some significant differences exist in the suspension and armament that were fitted to those holes. The overall shape of the SRB hull was remarkably similar to its SRA sibling, taking the shape of a mostly rectangular vehicle with two front plates angled backward, the driver's vision port being featured on the high one. The first major difference between the two designs was the gun mounted to the right of the vehicle. While the gun mount was identical on both vehicles, the SRB instead of a short 75mm howitzer mounted a 47mm Model 1902 naval gun, a weapon originally designed as an anti-torpedo boat weapon mounted on many French ships of the early 20th century. This weapon was present as an alternative to the 75mm in the requirements formulated by Estienne. However, all other manufacturers opted for the 75mm option, which may have appeared as a better option in the anti-fortification role the Char de Bataille was designed for. The 47mm, however, offered a better velocity than the 75mm. 750 meters per second is generally quoted as the muzzle velocity of the SRB's gun, which would suggest some modifications to the weapon as the standard version is known to have had a muzzle velocity of 690 meters per second. This was, in any case, superior to the 350 meters per second of the 75mm howitzer. The gun had a semi-automatic action, giving a maximum rate of fire of 15 rounds per minute. While it is likely this would have been lower in the constraints of an armored vehicle, the 47mm gun retained a better rate of fire than the 75mm. It also had some decent anti-armor capacity. With the model 1911G armor piercing shell, it could reportedly penetrate, at an incidence of 30 degrees, 40mm of armor at 500 meters and 30mm at 1 km. Whether or not mounting the 47mm on the SRB was intended to give the vehicle anti-armor capabilities is not known. A problem that has been suggested with the 47mm's quite long barrel is that it could possibly hinder the SRB's crossing capacities, as the barrel extended beyond the hull. As on the SRA, the mounting of the gun to the right of the hull on the SRB left a great deal of space for the driver. The SRB featured two large hatches on the side of the hull. In comparison to the SRA's hatches, the SRBs appeared to be taller, more rectangular and less square-shaped. The suspension of the SRB is not known in as much detail as its SRA sibling, but it is known to have made use of leaf springs. Fourteen small wheels can be counted on the bottom of the vehicle. The SRB had a rear drive sprocket and front idler wheel. The suspension was at its highest point in front of the side hatch of the vehicle. Unlike the three other prototypes, which used wooden pad tracks with a considerable pitch, the SRB used metallic tracks inspired from the Renault FTs, with each pad directly linked to the other. The armor of the vehicle was 30mm at its thickest on the vehicle's front. This was an impressive amount for 1925. The SRB was 6 meters long, 2.5 meters wide and 2.38 meters high, making it the longest of the four Char de Bataille prototypes. The ground clearance was 0.41 meters and the tank had a weight of 19 tons. The engine, which was designed by Renault, was a six-cylinder one based on a bisected 12-cylinder aircraft engine. It produced 180 horsepower at 1,500 RPM. This was 60 horsepower more than the Panard 120 horsepower engine used on the saint chamond and FCM tanks. Despite being the heaviest tank in the competition at 19 tons, the Schneider Renault prototypes also had the highest power to weight ratio with 9.5 horsepower per ton. 
the SRB consumed 20 to 35 liters of fuel an hour and its fuel tanks contained 370 liters, giving an average range of about 125 kilometers. The tank had a maximum speed of 18 kilometers per hour on the road and could cross a 2.5 meter gap. The transmission was at the rear, arguably the most advanced feature of the SRB laid within its transmission. The vehicle had been fitted with a Nader hydrostatic system. The purpose of this system was to allow for precise neutral steering of the hull in order to point the hull gun, which had no lateral traverse in its mount. It consisted in a system which received the movement of the engine and used it to move a fluid, a form of castor oil, sucking it in or out. This was used to operate slow and precise movements of the tracks in order to aim the hull. The hydrostatic system was used thanks to a steering wheel the driver of the vehicle could use. It allowed for very precise movements but also required the use of both castor oil and regular oil. The turret featured on the SRB as well as the SRA was of Schneider design. This was a cast design, a particularly modern feature for the early 1920s, with an inclined roof being at its highest at the rear. The turret had a turret ring diameter of 95 centimeters, weighed 700 kilograms, and was armed with two Hotchkiss Model 1914 8x50 mm Lebel machine guns. The crew of the SRB consisted of three, with the commander sat in the turret. The turret was mostly a command post, and the purpose of its armament was to defend the tank against enemy infantry, while the whole gun would engage static fortifications. The driver sat to the left of the hull and also operated as the hull gunner, which made him quite overtasked. The loader sat behind the 47mm gun on the right side of the hull. The SRB prototype was trialed along with the three other Shah de Batailles starting in Rueil from May of 1924 to March of 1925. It should be noted that it was tried with a supply trailer designed by Schneider, which had a weight of 1 ton and could carry 800 liters of fuel and seat 8 men. This was a forerunner to a Schneider trailer which was offered and used on the first B1s in the 1930s. The SRB is generally considered as the vehicle which performed the best during those trials. The internal configuration which it shared with the SRA, with the hull gun pushed to the right of the hull, left the driver considerably less cramped and more comfortable than on the FCM and saint Chamond designs. The vehicle's tracks were also praised. The metallic and unitary nature left them a lot less worn out than the wooden pad tracks of all the other prototypes. Most importantly, the Nader system featured on the SRB was praised as by far the most effective way of accurately pointing the hull, far superior to the epicyclic transmission used on the SRA. Out of all the Shah de Bataille prototypes manufactured, the SRB is arguably the one which had the most influence on the future Shah B1. While the SRA may at first glance seem a little bit more similar to the final product with its 75mm hull gun, the SRB's metallic tracks and Nader system were two major features of the B1 which were only featured on the Schneider design. The 47mm naval gun may perhaps have had some influence as well. The second and third prototypes of the B1 in the early 1930s were armed with 47mm naval guns in a fully rotative turret and the B1 and B1 BIS finally retained the 47mm anti-tank gun as a feature of their design, albeit replacing the machine gun armed turret of the Shah de Bataille and first B1 prototype and not the 75mm hull gun. As with the three other Shah de Bataille, the fate of the SRB prototype is unknown, with all known photos of the vehicle being from the 1924-1925 trials. It is quite likely that the prototype was scrapped at some point in the following years. That's all for this video. Make sure to follow our website, we'll be releasing new articles on the regular. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Reddit and if you use Discord there's a link to our community server in the description. Also likes, comments and subscriptions on YouTube are greatly appreciated. If you would like to help us continue to develop and expand, also consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us enhance and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.